Hello, everybody. And next up, we've got Horacio Gonzalez um, with uh, his talk, but there is no work component for that. So straight over to you. Hello. So who am um, sorry, trying to get things ready. Yeah, who am I? I am Horacio Gonzalez. I am a Spanish developer living in France. I have been there for almost 20 years. So my English accent combines the worst traits of Spanish and French people. Yeah, I know you are going to endure that for 30 minutes. Sorry. So I am rather active in the local developer ecosystem, Java user group, uh, Google developer groups. And I also speak about Polymer and web components in several conferences, meetups. I do some teaching about it. I am rather active and Google last year has appointed me as Google developer expert on web technologies. So that makes me speak even more about that. And today, today I am speaking about uh, what do you do when you have no web component in order to do the feature you need. And why? Let's begin with some context. Let's say you have your application using components, you need a new feature, you look around in all the different catalogs and there is no web component for your feature. But you see, there are lots and lots of JavaScript libraries that could do the same job. They are not component. So the question is what to do. For me, for me, it isn't a theoretical, sorry, I have a problem with my slides. So, so for me, it isn't a theoretical question. It's a very real one. Why? Because I have already been confronted to this problem several times in my professional life. I am really sorry about the slideshow. I hear, it seems I have a problem with the screen sharing and the controls. So I am going to try to solve it quickly. So uh, no component. Yeah. So many people won't have this problem. Never. Tomorrow there is a nice talk about that by Raphael. For many people where components, there are some things they are going to use to combine into their own framework, their Angular or React application. It's nice. But for me, it was a real problem because I am a, not a web component integrator. I am a web component developer. All began several years ago when I was working in my current uh, company, uh, Citizen Data. We do a time series database, Warp 10, and I am the front end guy. So when we needed something to do in the front end side, it was for me. At that uh, three, four years ago, I really loved Angular. I did everything with Angular. So when my boss arrived and told me, hey, I need an IDE in order to deal with our platform to send queries, to plot data, I told him, oh, easy. I will do it in Angular, of course. I did some directives, some controllers. I did a nice application. It worked. Several weeks later, my boss told me, hey, now we need a monitoring dashboard. Well, OK, no problem. I extracted some di directives of my application for plotting time series, for querying the database, and I did the monitoring dashboard. It was easy and I was happy. But, but then I hit a wall. My boss arrived and told me, hey, your dashboard is great. And Anur, one of our customers, wants the same. OK, no problem. But he doesn't use Angular. He used another framework. I think it was Ember at the time. 
oh, mierda. So, what could I do? So, I, I had to recode all my Angular dashboard, all the directives in Ember, making it rather, or it wasn't as good as I wanted, but it worked. And then, and then my boss come, came again. Hey, Horacio, I think we have a problem. I need another version of, the, of your dashboard, but this time it's, it is going to be in plain HTML pages, old HTML pages. So no Angular, no Ember, you are going to recode everything again. And that time I told myself, myself I had a true problem. <laughs> I wasn't going to keep recording it again and again, so I needed another another way. It was then that I discovered web components. I had listened listened to the Google talk about Polymer in 2013, and I told myself, okay, it could be nice. I tested web component, I tested Polymer, okay, it was uh, still young. I needed polyfills for almost all browsers. There was there were things that weren't perfect, but I had a choice I needed. So I began to use it. And since then, I almost use Polymer for everything. That means that in 200, uh, 2014, I did my first production application with Polymer for a demo that our company had a uh, CES at Vegas. And then I hit my first big problem with web component. I use lots of graphical components in order to, pl to plot time series, to plot heat maps, to plot color maps. And I use a lot of JavaScript libraries, D3, uh, MVD3, lot of Canvas, uh, Canvas libraries. Mm. So, so my slideshow still make me unhappy. So the problem was I needed some features. I there weren't any component for them, and I didn't know what to do. Okay, sorry again, guys. I'm really really sorry. So I didn't know what to do. I have in my head three solutions. The first one, wait for somebody to do the component. I could be lucky, maybe somebody had the same need than me and he will do it for me. Not, not really. The second solution was integrating the library in a dirty and in a quick and dirty way. It will work, maybe. It will be a hell to maintain but it will work. And the third one was to create a web component around my library, to wrap it in a web component and use it in a component way, using the same attribute in event out pattern that all the other components had and making it easy to integrate it in any component application. So do you, you can guess what solution I choose. And it was only the first time the question came again and again, hey, I, we need to integrate Ace Editor in our application. Okay, so I am going to wrap Ace Editor in a component. Hey, I need to integrate a new uh, plotting backend C3 in our application. Okay, let's wrap it in a web component. It was a really good way to do things after I had understood the right way to do it. So, so how do you do when you have a library and you need, and you need to componentalize it? I am going to begin with some examples. A quick disclaimer, I am doing all my examples in Polymer. It doesn't mean it is the only or the right way to wrap a library in a component. It is my way because I really like Polymer, 
but you can do exactly the same thing in the same way using any other component library, Skate, Bram, or Vanilla Web Components. It's the only uh, way to structurate things in order to wrap your library. So let's begin with my example. For the example, I have taken, uh, taken a true use case. I needed a QR code generator. I needed to be able to generate on the fly a QR code in my application. And when the data changes, the QR code needs to change. So I wanted it to be very flexible, to be able to generate uh, different size of QR code, to be able to generate alphanumeric, numeric, uh, URL, all kinds of QR code. And I needed it quickly because it was a side feature in my application. I didn't want to spend too much time on it. I looked around at the different polymer catalogs, I, at the different web component catalogs. I didn't find anything that could help me. So I decided to create Granite QR generator. Why Granite? Because it seems that everybody is calling their component collection using some material, iron, paper, gold. So I live in Brittany, in France, and here the coast is full of granite. It's very granitic. So I choose granite as my prefix. So granite QR code generator was one of my granite elements. So the first thing I do was to look what QR code generator library I could use. There are lots and lots and lots of QR code libraries. I choose one, qr.js. Why? It's an old one. It is really, really stable. It's small, rather small. It's very quick and especially it's very well coded. The code is a structure. It has a lot of comments. It's clean code. And I think you will understand later. It doesn't do any dirty DOM manipulation. It plays cleanly and fairly with the DOM. That's very important when you are going to create a web component for it. So the steps I followed to, to create a component around a library are always the same. First, I begin by creating an empty element, an empty polymer element. Then I add the library as a dependency for the element. Uh, in Polymer case, that means a Bower dependency. Then I load the library into the element file and I build a web component in encapsulating the library. And then profit, of course, or better said, I can enjoy my new element in my application. So the fourth steps seem simple. Build a web component encapsulating the library. It is really so easy. Well, to be honest, it isn't always so easy. But in most cases, it's rather easy. My method, it isn't maybe the best one, but it works nice for me. I begin by defining the, the inputs, the attributes that are the parameters I am going to need in order to pilot the library, to manipulate the library from the outside. Then I define the outputs, the events. Remember, when doing web components, the right pattern is attributes in the input and events for the output. Then I define the template and I wire the attributes and the events to the library. And if needed, 
I use the life cycle methods, really an attach on polymer, for example, to initialize. As I told you, you can use exactly the same steps with almost any other web component library. So the inputs, in my case, it was sample. There was one input that was very important, the data to encode. And all the other input and op are optional ones because the library has some nice defaults and you only need to pass them if you want to change these defaults. So I declare all the inputs as polymer properties. And for the optional one, I set the right uh, by default values. In order to do this and all the process, I inspired myself strongly of one polymer component, Iron Ajax, by the polymer people. It's really a nice component to understand the philosophy because it wraps a native, a native functionality, the Ajax call, in a web component. It does using the pattern attributes in events out and it makes everything in a clean and very explicit way. So uh, I defined the inputs and then the outputs. Well, the outputs for my component were easy. The only event my QR code generator needed was uh, to fire an event when a new code was generated. The template, it was also really, really easy. I only need a DOM node root in order to allow the generated image or HTML element uh, QR code to, to catch that root and show on the screen. So only a div, it will do it. And then the wiring. First, as I wanted everything to be clean, I, I do some validation of the input. I am, I don't show sanitizing, putting the right values, and if value are incorrect, putting the by default values. It isn't needed because the library, it's going to do the same thing for you. But if you do it in your element, you are showing the right values and it makes things easier to debug your component from the outside. Then I put one observer in order to listen to the input parameter change. And if we are, the, if the property auto is set, then each time the input parameter change, we are going to regenerate our code. It's by the by default behavior of the component. You could also want, like in Iron Ajax, prevent the by default behavior. Then you set auto to false, and then you can change any parameters. No QR code will be generated until you call manually that method. And then I only need to wire everything to the library. I only need some methods that read the input parameters, put it in an option object to pass to the library and calls the right version of the library if we want an image on us or an HTML element. So that's the, the glue we need in order to, to do our QR code. At the end, we are going to get an HTML element that we are going to put in our div using polymer.dom API. So then I have our granite QR code generator. It works. It was nice. It was easy. It's always so easy. Well, not really. Let's see another case. A case I hope would be as easy as this one and probably more complicated. I wanted a QR code scanner. Uh, 
the need the, the need came when I was asked to do a progressive web app for a conference to replace the different native application and the mobile website. So the progressive web app needed to be able to scan the batch of other attendees in order to get their contact information. So I needed to do a QR code scanner in my progressive web app. It couldn't, couldn't be so difficult. Yeah. I begin, I began like last time looking around the QR code scan libraries, which one to use. I look at uh, several of them and I choose GIS QR code. Uh, rather old, rather stable library by Lazarsoft. It's a small, it's a small because it's doing a full QR code scanner in only 110 kilobytes and compressed and uh, with full comments. It's very, it is very quick and efficient. It's able to detect QR code in low light and not very performant camera, so it works well. And the code, again, is clean, uh, well structured with comments. Are you see, seeing the trend? If you want to wrap a library with a web component, try to choose the right one. A library easy to work with. There was something I hadn't seen at the first time. It does some dirty DOM manipulation. We are going to see it later. So I took the same workflow that before, creating the element, uh, adding the library, loading the library, and then I begin with the I began with the build the web component. Okay, I defined the inputs and outputs. I needed an output with the last data decode. I needed to define the size of the video window to take the peak. I needed an attribute in order to say if the scanner was active or not, because when it is active, it eats the battery very, very quickly. So I didn't want it to be active every time. No problem. The output, I only need an event in order to say, hey, I have the code, a QR code. Okay, the template, well, when you look at that, it seems complex, it isn't. The, the complexity you see, it's only thanks to Safari, because Safari, it's the new Internet Explorer 6, I think, it doesn't support, for example, WebRTC, and WebRTC it's the specification used in order to allow the browser to catch the video stream for the from the camera. So with Safari, you aren't able to directly catch the video stream. You need to call the camera application, take a peek, and then recover the peek as a data URL. So I needed to do in the line 49 to 58, some alternative code in order to launch the camera application in Safari. Okay. So here there wasn't almost any wiring to do. I did most of the operation in the lifecycle methods. I begin in the attached method. I begin by initializing the Canva because I need to be able to catch the image and put it in a Canva to analyze it, Canvas. I, then I define it some callback for the decoding and I initialize it the webcam. Oh, the webcam initialization. Okay, please don't try to read the code. Yes, it's complicated because I needed I needed the application to be able to use the webcam in almost all browsers, in all platforms beside iOS. So uh, it's rather 
complex, complicated for in order to do it. If you have time, you can look at this later. And if you are find a better way to do it, please send me a pull request. I will be really happy. So let's suppose my webcam is initialized. What about the wiring? No wiring is needed because it is either done in the template using data binding or in the initialization. And then in initialization, I am going to link the Canva to the video stream. I'm making the library to read from the Canva and try to decode it. So it seems easy. I tested. I expected it to work and, and not it didn't work, not really. And worse, it didn't give any clear error. Simply, I didn't got any image on my Canva. Why? I didn't understand. I couldn't decode it. Why? What could I do? So I did the only thing you can do in this case. I had to dig in the into the library go deep, in, deep inside it, adding logs, adding breakpoints. And after some work, I found the guilty line. Do you see it? Maybe. OK, it's in line 44. There in line 44, you see a document dot get element by ID and then a hard code QR canvas identifier. So the, the library, the library, it's uh, directly trying to access to a DOM element by its ID. And it doesn't work in a shadow DOM context. It doesn't pass the shadow DOM boundary. So it will never work with web component. Yeah. That is dirty DOM manipulation for me. There are many libraries who do that, who directly manipulate the DOM, making some assumptions about the DOM. Yeah, you can almost query by an ID, but it doesn't work in a component work, world with shadow DOM. And then but what did I do? The only thing I could, I patched the library. I did it in the open source way. I forked the project. I patched the library. I wanted the library to keep by default exactly the same behavior than before. I didn't want to break anyone's code. So I only add another option in order to be able to pass an element, a Canva, not only by ID, by directly, directly as an HTML object. And then my library had a new option. I am going to push it as a pull request uh, as soon as I am able to explain it why. But for the moment, I have done my own fork and I have changed the dependency for my element to my fork. And, and then and then it works. It's able to scan the QR code. If I had more time, I would I will tell you about uh, how I hack the wall in order to make it work in iOS for iPhone and iPad. But that's another story that, that will be tell another time. There are other examples. There are many in my repository, different repository, Ace Widget. It's a wrap out around Ace Editor. And then this one was very interesting because it worked, it worked at the first time really nice until the time where I activated the Shadow DOM. And then all the style got messed up. Why? I didn't understand understand until I went deep in the library and I found it manipulated the CCs in a dirty way, creating so styles in the header of the document, 
calling the elements by its ID inside my web component. Again, a shadow DOM problem. Again, I had to patch it in order to make it work. So I think my time is over. I hope you liked this talk. I hope you had uh, maybe some ideas, some questions, some comment. Please don't hesitate to send me your question, email, Twitter, Hangout, anything, and I will try to do my best to answer them. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Arachio. It's a really nice talk. I get a lot of questions about kind of external dependencies in web components, so it's nice to see your approach. Have you got time just to answer one question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so I have Matthew time. Phillips asks, would it have been possible to fake the document object for that library? So it would think that your shadow DOM is the document. Yeah, I think it could be done. But uh, in in the libraries I have uh, patched, it seems easier to catch the reference and in, to modify them in order to make it work in the local context. I wasn't able to make uh, to fake the document in a easier way. So as I had no many time in order to do it, I preferred to do it in this way. But it could be really nice if somebody arrives to do it uh, well. Cool. Thank you very much. And thank you again for your talk. Um, so we'll be moving on to thank the next you. session shortly. Stay tuned. Thank you.